Hi, in this video I'll show you how to create a frequency polygon with multiple series of data. So let's say for example you have a situation where you're creating a frequency histogram and you've got our bins here and you really want to overlay them. Like you want to compare June to September. These are just some dummy data I put together. And here's a problem that happens when we overlay it, right? You have the overlay of one series of data over another and it doesn't really look that great and uh, you can you can tr change the trans transparency of the colors, but it still doesn't look that good. Another a way to go around that is to create a frequency polygon that kind of shows the same distribution of your data uh, over its bins, and that's what a frequency polygon would do for you. Let's see how we can create something like this. I have my data here. I'm going to bring this in uh, in pivot tables just to create my bins first. So. Select anywhere in there, go to insert, pivot table, put it on the existing worksheet here. Let's put it on cell E5. Put it right here. Click OK. I'm not too concerned with the year data. I just want to put in the September data and have it have the value, some of the values. So for my September rows, right click, group. Let's group this starting at uh, 20 and ending at 100 and go by 10. So click OK. Let's see what we get. All right, 20 to 29. Great. So we have our bins here, 20, 29 to 90 to a, hmm, maybe we should have a, let's see if it ends at 99. Let's change that group. Right click, group. What do we have? Let's end this at uh, 99. Let's see what happens there. Click OK. Yeah, all right, so 2029999. To create a frequency polygon, the points that you need are going to be at the midpoints, see, because they're going to be at the midpoints of our bin. So my bin is 2029, so the midpoint of that is going to be 24.9. That's where it kind of starts. You can see that it starts here. So I'm just creating another table that has my midpoints here. Let's have my table, we're going to have. 24.5 can be the start. That's that midpoint of these two, this these this range, and I can just fill down my series. Go to fill series, and my step value is going to be 10 because each bin is about 10 separated by 10. 10. The series are in columns. We will stop at let's stop at 104.5. Click OK. So now I've got my bins here or I've got my mid midpoints there. Control C to copy that. That is going to be over here. Control V to paste. Now I need to bring in the data for June. I'm just going to change this now. Set up September, June, and bring June in here. And also do the same thing. Right click, group. Have my midpoints. Let's start this one at 30. And we'll end it at 90. That's fine. Click OK. Let's see what, if we're OK. We're still doing that there. Right click, group. We'll end at 99. All right. Just in case, let me see if we have anything that ends at 99 in June. We might have something like that. Fine or end at 100. Fine next. I just need to do that check. How about the same over here? Anything that ends at 100, control F to find, no, nothing at 100. So we're good there. All right, so we've got to do that, those checks. Now, this starts at 30, 239, control C to copy. So we're going to be at this range, control V to paste. Uh, there's going to there's gonna be starting points for our frequency polygon. That's going to be 0 here and 0 here. It's going to be zero here at zero here. So we want to have beginning and end, end and points for that. Oops. Press enter. Also, I want my labels here. This is for, I think this one was September. And this is June. All right. I'm going to click outside my range of data here because I want to start a new insert. And the chart that I want to insert is going to be a scatter chart, but a scatter chart with straight lines and markers. Let's move this over here a little bit so we can see it. Now I'll add in my data. Go to select data. And for my first series of data, 
this is also at the September data first. The X values are my bins, and I've got to match my bins here with the data here. So I'll select that. Maybe I should add 14.5 there. I'll do that later. Delete this for the Y values and add my range of data here. Click OK. Click OK. Let's add 14.5. So at least it will complete it there, 14.5. So now I've got an ending point there. Got to do the same for June. So click in the chart, go under Design, select Data, uh, Add Series, add the June data. The X values are going to start here at 24.5. That's where the zero starts and the zero ends at 104.5. Select that. My Y series of data, delete that, and zero to zero here click OK click OK and now we have our frequency polygon courtesy of our scatter chart delete the grid lines select the grid line there press delete select that grid line press delete and just a spot check of our data hover over that is that right 94.587 94.587 and if I get over here where we have 94.5 it should be 270 that's correct same thing for here, if we are at 25, 24.5, which is this one, this data, 24.5 is 81, and of course 24.5, there is no data there because it starts at zero. So this is our frequency polygon, and that's really a hack when we think about it, because there is no frequency polygon chart in Excel. But if we wanted to do an overlap of a frequency histogram, there's not really a good, great way to do it. Our frequency polygon is a nice way to represent that data if we wanted to do some comparisons. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.